Today we're going to discuss removing the you second person from academic writing. Have you ever been dinged on a paper for using second person? This podcast will help you to avoid the ding and make sure you keep those points on future papers. We'll cover why second person should be avoided, how to spot those sneaky yous in your own writing, and how to break the you habit. First, this is going to sound kind of harsh. In all academic writing, all papers, for all college classes, all students must eliminate the use of second person pronouns. That does sound harsh, doesn't it? Well, it's harsh for a reason. The primary reason to avoid second person, those words like you, your, your, our, we, us, yours, is because it can cause confusion for your reader. First, it addresses the reader directly. That you speaks directly to me, this person reading what you wrote, and that's generally not who the re writer meant. Sometimes it can even sound insulting or even a little bit silly. Here's an example. When you reach puberty, you grow hair on your chest. It's also imprecise to use second person. Sometimes the writer says we, and the, write, the word we actually means you, the person who wrote the paper, and me, the reader. And that's often not who the writer means. Usually writers use we to mean Americans, civilians, people, Floridians, students, families of San Francisco. In those cases, it's best to use those nouns instead. They are more precise. The you is also inaccurate. Writers will often use you to mean people in general. On paper, it's not the same thing. As we discussed, the you can be confused for me, this person here reading your paper. The writer can never assume that people in general is understood because of that confusion. The writer should actually write people in general. Frequently when a you pops up, a shift in person has, has occurred, and that's definitely a no-no. This often happens when the sentence or even a paragraph starts out in one person, like first person, I, me, and then suddenly shifts for no reason whatsoever to a different person, you, your, yours. Here's an example. I love it when you have someone call you and you're not even expecting it. Well, who's getting the call? Me? You? It's just not clear. The use of second person is also too informal. Um, academic writing uses a more formal tone than everyday writing. And because you is so often used in conversations, it, it carries an informal tone and thus is not appropriate for your academic papers. Well, we know that using you can cause confusion. It addresses the reader directly, it's imprecise, it's inaccurate, it creates a nasty shift in person, and it's too informal. So how do we break the you habit? There are several tactics. Writers can use nouns instead, indefinite pronouns instead. They can cut the you out, and they should avoid giving commands. First, let's cover how to use a noun. As a writer, you need to try to figure out who the you really represents, and then change it to that noun. Take a look at this picture. Think of some nouns that describe these people. Who are they? They could be travelers, they could be considered business people, friends, co-workers, meeting attendees, even employees. Use those nouns instead. Here's an example. When you get cut off by another driver, you have to try to stay calm, for getting angry will only make matters worse. Here's a possible fix using the nouns instead. When drivers get cut off by another car, they have to try to stay calm, for getting angry will only make matters worse. 
Remember also that the word people is a noun. Another option to getting rid of the you is to use an indefinite pronoun. Those words like everyone, all, some, most, they work quite well as you substitutes. Here's an example of an indefinite pronoun fix. When answering the phone at work, you should try to smile. Here's the fix. When answering the phone at work, everyone should try to smile. And that's using that indefinite pronoun, everyone. The other option to getting rid of the you is just cut it out altogether. Or substitute the word the and see if the sentence still makes sense. Frequently it will. Here's an example. Your body needs fruits and vegetables every day. Here's the possible fixes. The body needs fruits and vegetables every day. In this case, we dropped the U and in exchanged it for a the. The other option is just to cut it out. Bodies need fruits and vegetables every day. The last way to avoid using you in your academic writing is to avoid giving commands. This one's kind of slippery because most people don't even see these when they have them in the paper. Statements like try to stay calm, avoid giving commands, eat fruits and vegetables every day are all actually commands. In those cases, you, second person, is the implied subject. Instead, you want to try to stay in third person. Instead of try to stay calm, add a noun to that and make it third person. Drivers should try to stay calm. Instead of avoid giving commands, give a specific person or people that you're referring to. Writers must avoid giving commands. Everyone needs to eat fruits and vegetables. So we know the four ways to fix the you and get them out of our writing, the use. We can use nouns, indefinite pronouns, we can cut it out altogether, and we can avoid giving commands. Now we're going to figure out how to spot them because they do tend to sneak in. It's so frequently used that sometimes your eyes will just skim over them. So the best way to spot the you in your papers is to print it out and read it out loud. Your ears will pick up much more than your eyes can see. Another technique if you are comfortable with using your word processing software is to use the find replace function to locate the word you and then correct those instances of that word. One trouble with that is that it only will find Y-O-U you must go through it several times and have it check for your, you are, yours, we, our, us. And commands will be quite difficult that way, so you'll need to still print it out and read it out loud. We know that you is unacceptable for academic writing. We know how to fix it, we know how to spot it, but can it ever be used? Of course it can. Second person is quite effective with persuasive writing. Advertisers use it all the time. It's also perfectly fine for writing an informal letter to a friend. It's also effective when trying to build a personal rapport with people, like a teacher using it with his students. The key here is to use second person intentionally, not just out of habit. And above all, make sure the you doesn't confuse your reader. So get the you out of here and stop by one of the learning support commons if you need additional help. We are on many of the campuses and are eager to work with you. If you'd like, check out one of our other podcasts, the Not So Scary Semicolon.